Chapter 7, ACLS Cases Welcome to the lesson on respiratory arrest. In this video, we'll discuss how to care for a respiratory arrest. Respiratory arrest is an emergent condition in which the individual is either not breathing or is breathing ineffectively. Individuals in respiratory arrest require immediate attention. There are many causes of respiratory arrest, including but not limited to cardiac arrest or cardiogenic shock. Resuscitate individuals in apparent respiratory arrest using either the BLS or ACLS survey. The BLS survey advises to check for responsiveness, call EMS and get AED, check for responsiveness again, and defibrillate. Figure 20 in your corresponding ACLS manual details the BLS survey. The ACLS survey follows the ABCD pattern in which you check for airway, breathing, circulation, and differential diagnosis. Refer to figure 21 in your corresponding ACLS manual to further learn about the ACLS survey. When caring for individuals in respiratory arrest, keep in mind the two types of ventilations, advanced and basic. Advanced ventilation includes esophageal tracheal tube, endotracheal tube, laryngeal tube, and laryngeal mask airway. Basic ventilation include mouth-to-mouth -mouth or nose, mouth-to-bag ventilation, oropharyngeal airway, and nasopharyngeal airway. Although OPAs and NPAs are considered to be basic airways, they require proper placement by an experienced provider. Advanced airway insertion requires specialized training beyond the scope of ACLS certification. While the placement of advanced airways requires specialized training, all ACLS providers should know the proper use of advanced airways once they're placed. Regardless of airway type, proper airway management is an important tool of ACLS. CPR is performed with the individual lying on their back. Gravity causes the jaw, the tongue, and the tissues of the throat to fall back and obstruct the airway. The airway rarely remains open in an unconscious individual without any external support. Therefore, you have to open the airway by lifting the chin upward while tilting the forehead back. This is known as the head tilt chin lift maneuver. The goal is to create a straighter path from the nose to the trachea. In individuals with suspected neck injury, protect the cervical spine by performing the jaw thrust maneuver to open the airway. While standard practice in a suspected neck injury is to place a cervical collar, this should not be done in BLS or ACLS. Cervical collars can compress the airway and interfere with resuscitation efforts. As a provider, you must ensure an open airway regardless of the basic airway used. It is your responsibility to stabilize the head or ask for assistance while maintaining control of the airway. During respiratory arrest care, be sure not to overventilate. That is, give too many breaths per minute or too large volume per breath. Both can increase intrathoracic pressure, decrease venous return to the heart, diminish cardiac output, as well as predispose individuals to vomiting and aspiration of gastrointestinal contents. This concludes our lesson on respiratory arrest. Next, we'll review ventricular fibrillation and pulseless ventricular tachycardia.